Well, hi everyone, this is Dr. Bob. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different on my channel. I'm going to kind of go into my life a little bit. I'm a medical marijuana certification physician in Michigan. Now, what I would like to do today is start a short series on the Michigan Medical Marijuana Program and the Recreational Marijuana Program. So, my expertise is primarily with the Michigan Medical Marijuana Program. I was uh, actually one of the people that helped develop the standards. I was involved in getting post-traumatic stress syndrome approved as a, um, as a condition for medical marijuana. And uh, one of the things that we do is we have to kind of put these forms out correctly because the state will deny any minor error on the application. And I've gotten many calls from physicians trying to figure out how to set these uh, forms up properly. Uh, I've gotten a lot of patients that came in uh, with a form from their primary care physician that wasn't filled out correctly and they got a denial and they came into our office to have us help them get it fixed. That's something that we do as a courtesy to our fellow physicians. But I thought maybe I'd just put together a short video and show you how to do it right. So let's get started. Now the form itself is three pages and let's just go through them briefly one by one. Now, the first page is basically the instruction page, and there's a couple of key pieces of information. Up in the upper right corner, you can see the Michigan Medical Marijuana Program, Application Renewal Instructions and Checklist. Now, right underneath it, that 517-284-6400 number, that is the number for the Michigan Medical Marijuana Program. So if you have any questions about this, um, you want to check on the status of your application, etc. That's the number that you will call. Now, going down on this form a little bit, you see the address of the Michigan Medical Marijuana Program. It's P.O. Box uh, 30083, Lansing, Michigan, 49, or excuse me, 48909. Now, underneath that, you've got a nice little checklist to help make sure that your application packet is complete. The first one is going to be your application for the registry identification card, and that's what we're going to go over in a minute. You're going to give them a check for $60 made out to the MMMP, which stands for Michigan Medical Marijuana Program. If you have a caregiver, you have to give them an extra $25 to do the caregiver's background check. Now here's a pro tip for you. You want to include both the $60 and the $25 in one check of $85. And this is the reason why. If you send two different checks, one for $60 and one for $25, if for any reason the application form is incorrect, you didn't sign it, you made an error on it somehow, what they will do is they will run the caregiver's background check and then send you a note saying, hey, your application was denied. You need your sixty dollars is on file with us, but you need to send us another check for a repeat background check on your caregiver. If you put them all in one check, they will not cash that check if the form is incorrect. They'll only ca they'll only cash the check after they've approved the form. Then finally, you need a, a proof of residency and you need a valid Michigan driver's license or personal identification card. If you have a signed voter's registration card but an active license in another state, that is not proof of Michigan residency. And finally, of course, you're gonna need my physician certification form. And we'll go over all of these forms here in a few minutes. Okay, so we've got the checklist all set. Let's get into the actual application itself. We'll do the patient part. Now this is the part that the patient fills out. Now I want to draw your attention to this official use only box up in the upper right. They're not kidding about that. If you make any marks within this box, even if you erase them, they'll deny your application. So stay away from this box. Now, underneath, you'll see the usual stuff that you would expect, patient information. This has to be exactly as it appears on your driver's license. Your first name, the entire world may know you as Chris, for example, except for God, your mother, and the state of Michigan know your name is Christine. Put down Christine if that's what's on your driver's license. Your middle initial, one letter. Last name, put that in. Now, if you're renewing your card, you can put your registry ID number 
however you don't need to but you do need to put your date of birth in now notice the format it's month day year I've had these applications denied because people write down 10 October now under mailing address it's kind of important to have only one address here for example if you have a house number and a PO box and you get your mail at the PO box you don't put both your house number and your PO box on this line you pick one or the other your apartment suite lot number self-explanatory city state and zip code your telephone number is optional I would probably just go ahead and throw it on there the next section is section B you have to decide who is going to have your marijuana plants you as a patient can grow up to 12 plants and if that's what you wish to do or you wish to obtain it from a dispensary or provisioning center you click I will possess my plants if you are going to have another individual over the age of 21 with no history of any felony convictions grow for you that is what we call your caregiver and generally if you have a caregiver they have the plants so you would check that box now if you do have a caregiver you're going to fill out their information exactly as you filled out yours now one key difference here is you have to indicate your caregiver is male or female I just had a patient in the office named Lynn and um, he was a male so the state doesn't know and sometimes when they do the criminal background check that becomes important the telephone number for your caregiver of course is optional I'd probably toss it in they also have other names used by the caregivers such as nicknames maiden names etc uh, fight the temptation to put an interesting nickname in there but if there is a maiden name that might be important now in section D you need to sign what we used to call in the army your payroll signature right here as the patient and then put in today's date your caregiver will sign on the line below if you have one and they put in the date that they signed it and that's pretty much all there is for this now in our practice I have software that basically takes your license your driver's license and scans the back of it and fills this form out completely now the final page of the application is the physicians page I'm going to show you how this is properly filled out because many primary care doctors don't do a lot of these and sometimes they make mistakes so this is a way for you to know how it should be filled out and you can check it over before you leave the office to make sure everything is correct on it it'll save you a denial from the state and a lot of hard now the physician certification form which is page three of the application packet is really very straightforward the physician puts their name in and their mailing address this is generally their office address and their office telephone number down below they have a Michigan physician license number it is 10 digits long make sure there are 10 digits listed under the license number and a MD or DO box is checked sometimes doctors uh, are a little confused about this they'll put in their national practitioner identification number make sure that it is a 10 digit number for Michigan here's the patient information from the first section of the form make sure it matches the second page your same first name your same middle initial same last name make sure if there is a junior senior second or the third listed on your driver's license it is listed out here in the suffix make sure your date of birth is put in in the correct format and make sure it is your date of birth not today's date the physician will check off the conditions that qualify you for medical marijuana in these three categories category A is named conditions category B is non-named conditions that produce certain symptoms and category C is actually the latest conditions that have been approved by the state of Michigan you'll notice post-traumatic stress autism colitis cerebral palsy are all listed over here we're gonna go over in a future video each one of these conditions and what cannabis does uh, for them and what kind of records you would need to qualify under that particular condition down here at the bottom make sure the physician signs it and puts the correct date on it okay in this episode what we did was we went over how to correctly fill out the application form 
for a registry ID, both new and renewal, under the Michigan Medical Marijuana Program. Now, many of the guidelines that I gave you on, this, on filling this particular form out can apply to other states. You need to show a little care when you fill these forms out. The state is very quick to reject and deny applications that are not filled out correctly. They do not deny applications based on medical reasons. They assume the doctor has reviewed those, but they do scrutinize each form to make sure it's filled out correctly. Now, in future episodes, I'm going to go over each of the conditions that is approved for the use of medical marijuana in the state of Michigan, in the United States, and what marijuana does for those conditions. So, this is Dr. Bob. Thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you found this video helpful.